On this episode, we organize a surprise party for Christian. Oh my gosh, yes! We plan out tasks to the enemies in our game. Fly in, protect, attack. <laughs> and we encounter no problems whatsoever. Yes. <laughs> Hmm. Hi guys, I'm Christian, Lazy Devs, Schmup, you know what it is. Episode 20. We are making a Schmup. And there's just no gameplay. <laughs> Some people were complaining, like, make the gameplay! Okay, yeah, we have individual enemies, but it's not the real deal. You know it's not the real deal. Uh, let's update our to-do function. Winning music. All right, even more enemies. Yeah, we have one to create enemies. We want enemies to have behavior. Where do enemies spawn? They fill the screen, like in Space Invaders. That's something that we want to do today. That was the doggy zone. Hopefully you guys... Hopefully you guys... I'm recording this in advance. I don't, didn't see your results. I will be there in Discord uh, uh, commenting on them. But yeah, uh, we want to now create a whole bunch of enemies here. How are we going to do this? Well, uh, we're gonna learn a new concept and that is gonna be two dimensional arrays. <laughs> we're gonna have to, because it's not just about spawning the enemies. We can spawn the enemies, no problem. But it's also, I'm thinking about how to design the levels because we're gonna have, we're gonna have a whole block of enemies on the screen, right? And I want to be able to control you know, which area of the screen and which location there is what kind of enemy, because we have multiple enemies, right? And in order to do that, we're gonna have to deal with two dimensional arrays, but that's something that comes up in a second. All right, let's just jump straight in. Now, let's just create a new function. We have spawn n, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it up here. We have spawn n, uh, but now I want to create a function that that um, I'm going to call this place ends. Place ends doesn't. And whenever I have two, let's call it pl plugins. <laughs> place ends. <laughs> uh, this function will basically. We're going to expand in a second, but first we're going to make a function that will just fill the screen with 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 enemies. Let's just do this. We're going to use two loops that are uh, in each in inside each other um, to uh, go. You know, let's just create a line of enemies. Let's just let's go do one loop with one line of enemies, and we're going to talk about all the other ideas later. So we're going to go for x uh, equals one to ten, twenty, thirty, thirty enemies. Let's see how how does that works. And so, okay, so now I want to spawn an enemy at a very specific position. Now our spawn end function doesn't allow us to do this. Uh, because this spawns an enemy, right? Spawns an enemy. But here the spawn and end function randomizes the position. It kind of randomizes the X position and it always sets the spawning point off screen. That's okay for like modern kind of schmucks where the enemies are flying on a timer, but we decided, or I decided, not you, that this is going to be more of a Space Invaders kind of thing because it fits, I think it fits better to the wave idea. That you see all the enemies, you have to get rid of the enemies, and when all the enemies disappeared, the wave is over. I think this just gameplay wise just makes more sense because if you don't do that, then it's like, oh, the wave begins and the screen is empty and then enemies are petering in and then it's like, you don't know when you finish. I guess you have to survive for a while. It's just like, it's not clear what is happening and how long you have to wait. And it's also difficult for us to kind of like define that also in, in when you program this, you have to maybe do like a timer, like a wave t takes, you know, I don't know, 30 seconds. It's, it's weird, right? So we simplify our life our goal is to finish this game, okay? <laughs> and sometimes we're making things too complicated for us. Let's just do Space Invaders and let's make sure that this is going to be an awesome Space Invaders. I think that's way easier problem to solve than trying to come up with a kind of like nebulous wave concept on a timer and whatever. Just make Space Invaders, okay? Now, in order to make Space Invaders, uh, we have to update this spawn end, end function. We're just going to basically use it as print. You remember print where you have, say, print this text at this location. 
Well, basically, we're going to do same, the same thing with a with a spawn end function. We're going to say spawn this enemy type at this location. So we're going to expand the uh, uh, parameters of this function. So we're going to go n x and n y. We're going to add two parameters or arguments to this function, and we're going to spawn the enemies at those parameters. We're not going to randomize the position anymore. This means that all of these have to, we have to quote them out. They are outdated now because we always have to specify where we're spawning the enemies. That's good. Now, I don't know exactly where I'm spawning them. I don't know. Um, let's just go with... Uh, um, okay, so the X position is something that we want to create a row of enemies, right? So we're going to go like X because this is a for next loop. Uh, we have this counter variable. We call this x this time around. You will see why in a second. So we're going to start x equals 1, and it, it spawns an enemy, and then it's 2, spawns an enemy, 3, spawns an enemy, so forth. So it kind of like counts the enemies, how many enemies we're spawning. So we're going to take that number. We're going to multiply it by 8, because that's how big an enemy is. So we can like spawn them next to each other. And then why? Well, we, it's all only going to be in one row for now, so we're gonna just going to type in a number. Eight. I don't know. A uh, position. That's not going to change throughout the loop, okay? Um, then now we just want to make sure that this function is called on wave number one. And let's just let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes! They're coming at us, bro! <laughs> okay, so let's tweak things. First of all, I don't want the enemies to move anymore. Um, we're gonna make them move eventually, but for now I want stationary enemies because I am concerned about how enemies spawn more than how they behave. We're gonna take the behavior later on. Now let's go to the update function. Um, and let's see where we're moving the enemies. Here we're moving the enemies. Here is where we're changing the Y position of the enemy. I'm gonna code comment this this part out. We're just gonna just gonna keep them around where they are. And that's not bad. Now we're going kind of off screen here, and I don't like how they're like packed together. Um, so let's see if we can make m increase the spacing between the enemies. So maybe instead of eight, let's go 16, right? So there's like a, a whole enemy fits in be between the enemies. Now it's kind of like looks a bit sparse. So let's go down to 12. Yeah. 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 That looks space invader-ish. Now, let's see how many enemies fit on the screen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 enemies. Now, the 10th enemy... There's a bit of a gap here. We can just fly in here. There's, there's a whole gap here. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to make so that there is no... That we can't fit a spaceship between an enemy and the edge of the screen. Um, so if that's the case... Then, because if we make a nine, we spay, uh, spawn nine enemies from one to nine, we change the number of loops, and no longer between one and 30. It was way too much because we spawn enemies off screen. We're just gonna spawn nine enemies. And you can see now there's like big gaps on both sides. Here's a big gap. I mean, they're even, so that's good, um, but there's big gaps on both sides. I want to maybe spawn 10 enemies and move them a bit um, closer to the edge of the screen. So let's spawn 10 enemy enemies. And then here we're going to go minus four. Is that, is that, is that good? Does that look good? Uh, minus six. Yeah, now it looks centered and we cannot fit on the edges of the screen. That's okay. If we want to have a pathway there, we, we, we can make one. But that's something that we're going to deal with in a second. Okay, we created now one row of enemies. Now I want to create four rows of enemies. So, so we're going to wrap this for next loop in another for next loop. I think we did this one. Where, where, when did we did this? I think we did. 
uh, between one and four, right? Making sure that indentation is correct. Uh, the function, things inside the function are indented by one, things inside the first loop are indented by two, and things inside the second loop are indented by three. All right, if you run this now, though, it's like, it's just, it looks like we're spawning one row of enemies, but we're spawning actually four rows of enemies on top of each other. So we have to increase the spacing in the Y direction as well. So let's just go eight plus Y times 12, right? Uh, the eight is kind of like an offset from the top of the screen. Uh, y is, you know, the, the current row. Uh, multiply by 12. 12 is the spacing that we had vertically, or horizontally, so I'm assuming the same spacing vertically. Yeah! Now that looks like Space Invaders to me. Now also we already noticed, ah oh man, the HP of the enemies is not good. It takes too long to kill them. That doesn't feel right. It's just like, ugh, you have to like shoot at them. That's bad. Ugh. <laughs> I like the sound of it I'm doing. Um, so let's just set it to one, just like to go, so we can go through like like hot butter through knife, uh, like hot knife through butter, hot butter through knife. That's all possible. Um, yeah, that's good. I, I think one is a bit too. Let's go. Let's make it like three. Let's try three. Yeah, see, now they're exploding very soon. Because there was supposed to be five at the beginning. Of five. And so th let's just keep it at three. You know what? I'm thinking maybe we have to move them a little bit up. I think they were a bit too far down. I think it was the, bit, the gap to the top of the screen was a bit too much. So I moved it a little bit up. Yeah, before, instead of eight, it was at eight before. That looks like this. See, there's like, it seems like there's a row on the top missing. Um, so let's just, just move it to four. So I think that just gives us a bit of a even a spacing. This um, it gives it just a little bit more playroom down here because right now the enemies are kind of like filling the half of the screen and that kind of like feels okay. That feels space invadery <laughs> uh, without being too, too restricted. It already feels fun. And I feel like maybe the explosion is a bit too big because when somebody explodes, it really overlaps their neighbors. Um, maybe went overboard with a little bit of explosion. So maybe we might want to tone it down later on, but that's not a high priority. I'm not going to deal with explosion anymore. For now, I want to just like really get some some gameplay in and, you know, get all of the elements in and then tweak them later on. All right, so the problem now is that we are <clears throat> always spawning the same enemy and I want to maybe define uh, what enemies I want to spawn, right? Okay, so what if we had, let's say, each row of the enemies, let's say each row of the enemies, we could define by uh, with an array. Let's say we had an array and we put the array into, into the argument here when we're placing the enemies. We're going to create an array and we said there's 10 enemies in each row. So let's just uh, say we can decide what enemies are in each row. So let's say we're going to go one, one, that's going to be the green enemies. And then two, two, that's going to be red enemies. Three, three, that's going to be the spaceship enemies. And then one, one, green enemies again. Uh, let's see, four, five, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and then two, two, or whatever. Uh, or, or let's just let's make it like two, two, and, and one, one, like this. 10, an array of uh, 10 entries, a list of 10 entries, 10 numbers in the curly brackets. And this is placed in uh, the, um, in the parentheses of where we put the arguments. Now we're gonna basically call this level. This is basically a level, right? We're gonna go LVL, this level. Uh, we're gonna receive this array and this, this array will be assigned to the local variable called LVL. That's basically how arguments work, right? We have now this LVL and that has become this array, at least in the, in the, in the first level. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, for every enemy we spawn, we're gonna take the number from this array, 
Um, so basically, this array will define which enemies are spawned on every slot, uh, on every line. So instead of the one here, that was the green guy that we had pre previously, we're just going to go with a level, square brackets. Now we have to specify which number from this array we're taking. Well, it's always going to be X. Just taking those numbers from the loop and uh, using it uh, to pick the right number from the array so we can decide which enemy spawns at every given spot um, of the line. And see? See? Doesn't look like awesome, like that's space invaders right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. So now we are basically making levels. The only problem that we have here right now is that these levels are every line is the same and i would maybe like to define you know be able to specify individual lines here right like be, design the level here i want maybe like the lower row to be of green enemies and then the red enemies are in the middle and then the upper rows are maybe going to be the spaceships the rotating spaceships right i want to be able to make these decisions and i cannot do this right now because we're defining one row and copying it four times. This is where multi-dimensional arrays come in. It's not that hard. Basically, a multi-dimensional array is where we take an array, and usually, you know, here in this case, we put numbers in arrays. We are going to put arrays into arrays. <laughs> so look, okay. Let me let me explain. Let me show you a little. Let me because this is a big array. We're gonna use a small array. Test array. Te test -er -r. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be too long because. So let's have an array, right? And let's it, let's let's say it has one and it's a and b, oh, three and four. It has the numbers three and four. Two entries, right? Each of these numbers. We already had the situation where instead of these numbers, we put objects in an array, right? That was a very powerful thing that we're doing it all the time now, right? We did it with, I don't know, with enemies and with, with stars and bullets, you know, all of these things are being put, are basically just arrays where each entries are not numbers, but objects. We can now put an array instead of the numbers. So instead of the three, I'm going to delete the three and I'm going to open a new curly brackets. Five, seven. And then instead of the four, we're going to go nine, zero. <gasps> so we basically created a table now. This is a two dimensional array. This basically looks like this. If you look at this, right, we have, uh, on, that's, that's the first line of the table. So that's going to be five, seven. And that's the second line of the table. That's going to be nine. Zero. Cool. How are we going to access those numbers? It's kind of easy. I'm going to take this out of this function here. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it in. Um, this is. Uh, this is put it in a draw function of the start screen because that's something that the game starts on. I want to just show something, right? Let's go here. A draw start. We have this test R, right? And I'm going to go print test, test R. Now, previously, when we wanted to take a value from, a, from an array, we would have to have the square brackets, right? The square brackets. And then we put number in here and like, you know, you have one is the first entry in array, two is the second entry, in, and three is the third entry and so forth. So, so that's how we go through an array. Well, with two dimensional arrays, you just have two square brackets after each other, two square brackets. And this refers to kind of like, uh, if you have the table, this refers to the first number refers to which row we are, first row or second row. And the second number refers to which uh, column we are. Uh, yeah, which column we are. So like uh, first entry or second entry in a row. 
So for example, now in this little tiny little, the tiniest two dimensional array, if we're going to print t um, test r11, this should give us the five. Let's see if that works. Yeah, there we go. There's the five. I mean, it's, um, um, let me, so we can see it more clearly. We're going to make it red. And people were asked, why is it print somewhere? Let's just put it uh, smack in the middle of the screen. 64, 64, 8, right? So there's no confusion. There it is. There's the five. Okay. So now we can just experiment, but you can just find it on your own. You don't have you don't need me to explain it. So what happens if we set the second number to two? Oh, it's a seven. So now with the two, we're able to access the second entry in the first row. First row, second entry, right? We made like a little table here. Now, what if we wanted to have the nine? That's the second row, first entry. Second row, first entry, that's nine. And of course, these can be a lot bigger. 40, and we can have bigger numbers too, 900. Uh, 7,000, 1, 1, 1, 1, um, something like this. And we're going to have like a third, third row as well. Uh, it's going to be... I don't know, man. I don't know. So let's just expand this now. So now the third entry is 900. Uh, wait, I'm, I, I lost control. I lost control. 45, 900. 907K. Uh, 1111. And the third entry, third line is going to be 9171. 9171. One. Right, something like this. Now we have three lines and each line has four entries. So let's run this now. Still nine, but what if we want to have the nine, one, 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 right? So that's the second line and the fourth entry in that second line. One, two, three, four. This should be the one, one, one. That's the one, one, one. That's how it works. That's how you access a two-dimensional array. Uh, there's other ways you can do this as well. Um, if this is just like, fan it's because it's like two square brackets after each other. Oh, by the way, uh, the numbers are blue, so you totally can put in uh, variables in, in those square brackets to kind of like iterate for an array. That's, that's also fine. Uh, but maybe those square brackets are uh, something that you are, un that's something that you're not comfortable with. Something you can do is you can uh, use helper variables to extract a line from a two-dimensional array. Right. So in this case, if you want to have the one one one, we can do something like uh, local mm, my line equals, and then we're gonna have the test array, and we're gonna say the second line. We want to have the second line. That's why only one square bracket. We just want to have the entire second line, one square brackets. That's gonna be this entire line, a single array, and we're gonna put it in put it into this test variable. Uh, this uh, helper variable called my line, and then we can just print my line entry number four from my line because this my line is just like this one uh, this one line it has just four entries nine zero seven thousand and one 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 so just printing the fourth entry in this little line that we extracted from the array uh, will return one 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 so you can do that uh, you cannot, as I understand, you cannot uh, extract columns. That doesn't, w I mean, you can, but it's more work uh, because the way we set it up is just like line by line. Okay, so let's take this knowledge and use this knowledge to generate, to create levels for our, um, for our, for our little game. We're going to use the two-dimensional array to create a, a little, little map. So look at this, we can, because if, if we define something, we can actually, it's okay. It's actually, you can just put enter and just like continue working on this, right? Something like this. We have curly brackets, curly brackets closed. So here we open the first curly brackets and here we close those curly brackets. And here are the individual lines now. I, I indented them a little bit so it's more visible. Uh, so this is the first uh, line in our two dimensional array. I'm going to go comma, second line, comma, 
third line, comma, fourth line, no comma anymore. Finished, just four lines, right? They're now the same, so let's change them a little bit. So let's put like some green guys in the middle here. Let's put some, uh, let's make the final line all red guys. Uh, that's number two. And let's put uh, threes on the outer one. So it's just like it's just like messing around with the numbers a little bit. So we just have like a unique design for each line. Let's run this. Let's see the seed fail in, in interesting ways. <laughs> what happened? Uh, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting failure. Wow. So what happened now is, hmm, <laughs> that's a very, so what happened now is sometimes Pico 8 is not really good at giving you ideas of what happened. So what, what we do is we take this two dimensional array, this huge two dimensional array, and we run it through place ends through this, through this, um, through this function. We uh, take this huge two dimensional array here, and then we spawn a new enemy based on an entire line of enemies. We just take an entire array as an argument uh, to the spawn n function. n type is now an entire array, not just a number, an entire array. So it spawns, tries to spawn the enemy, but like none of the matches fit. Like it's not nil, but it's not one, two, or three, it's an entire array. I don't know which one it is. It just adds an enemy without, <laughs> with like in, an incomplete information, especially when it comes to animation. And then it fails later down the line somewhere in update function. <laughs> it gets a bit too far, I think. We should probably put, a fin put an else here and say like, I don't know what to do with this. But it's okay. We're just messing around with this anyway. Right, so here we can do spawn n level x, square bracket, um, le level y. Ah, there's a nil value happening. Uh, does it work other way around? Yeah, that works. So the first entry is the, the line and the second entry is the column, right? So the first entry is y, the line that we're spawning. And the second entry is the column, the entry in each line that we're spawning. I think we can rewrite this a little bit so it's more clear. Something we can do here is we're going to create a local. Uh, we're going to write this in the second uh, way. We're going to go my line, local my line equals level y. We're going to take a line from this array, line number y and we assign it to this uh, helper variable and then when we spawn the enemy we're going to go my line square bracket x the entry in this line number x first enemy is on and number uh, entry number one second is number two third is number three and so forth right same thing maybe now it's a bit clearer we're just like extracting a line and then drawing the line just like before Okay. Now this is an advantage because it's you know it's not just about spawning enemies. We we or can do that. It's about having control of which enemies spawn where in a way that is convenient to you as a designer. I want to be able to quickly change some numbers around and design a level in a way that's convenient. I don't want to be like you know, doing something very complicated to design uh, levels, because then what happens is if it's complicated, then I won't do it. Or I do will do just the bare minimum because I don't, I want to get rid of it I, because it's just like, I'm, I'm uh, overwhelmed, right? So I want it to be easy and fast to design those levels because that's the creative part and it should be like effortless, right? Uh, and I think like having like this little matrix of numbers i think that's okay that's that's good enough i can kind of like see what's happening like because this these numbers kind of co correspond to uh to the enemies that we saw right you can see that the lower now uh lower line is all twos and you can see that that's the same case here as well 
the lower line is all, all the red enemies. The red enemies mean two, right? By the way, something we haven't done yet, and maybe we're going to do this now, is if, if we encounter a zero, we're not going to spawn any enemy on that slot. So this allows us to have like maybe empty rows. So we're going to go like if my line x equals z is not equal zero. Oh, we haven't done not equal zero, right? So it's exclamation point equals zero. Not equals, right? It's not equal. That's why I think exclamation point is it's like this. No, oh, not zero, not equals. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that that fits. That's kind of like that's easy to remember. So exclamation point, exclamation mark. Uh, equals uh, not equal zero. So if it's an unequal zero, then um, then we spawn something. If it's zero, then we're not going to do anything. Uh, we may should maybe have a row of zero. So let's make it so that the this row, the second to last row on the right, is zero. So maybe we break the symmetry of this a little bit as well. And you can see now we have a little nice gap that we can fly in. Maybe there's some strategic uh, value of there. Maybe there's going to be a level where you can just fly in and get rid of something. Huh? Okay. So now we can design levels. Let's design levels. So basically we're going to copy this. We can delete the sp old spawn and stuff. We can just design a bunch of levels. Uh, and I'm going to use the kind of like the same pattern that we had before where each level I want to introduce a new enemy for now. Um, yeah, so the first level is going to be all just all classic one enemies. So we're going to make this all ones. So it's all going to be green enemies. I want to start with a very classic kind of space invader kind of look. Uh, and for the space invaders look, I want to actually, and that's why I want to have the enemies to go to the edges so you can fly in. I want to actually make um, zero columns on the outside. So it looks more squarish. So it looks more like space invaders. See, that to me, that feels, that feels just right. You know, you can just like, there's the square compact block. Enemies are, uh, you know, all lined up. I can just blow them all up. Perfect. I love it. Wave is finished. Next wave, right? Good. Now on the next wave, maybe, I don't know, I'm just going to use ones and twos. So let's just go something like this, a column of two, uh, so two columns of ones, two columns of twos, then a column of ones in the center, maybe uh, with twos in the front. You can easily see how it's very easy. Once you get used that, you know, which number corresponds to which enemy, it's very easy to design these levels like this. And it's, I, I think it's very convenient. <laughs> There's other methods I, I've seen people use. Um, I've seen, for example, some, some people draw something on a sprite sheet and then use function to access pixels from the sprite sheet. I've seen, seen people use this um, this map editor that I we haven't explained yet. So I didn't want to do either of those things. I think just two-dimensional arrays, even though they're a bit abstract, they will help us more in the long run because this is something actually that might be useful in other situations as well. Right. Um, I want, this takes too long to kill all of those enemies. So I want to just have each enemy to have one health point. I just want to, I just want to see what the enemies are doing. Bad. <laughs> feels, feels good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now the second level has red enemies. I thought maybe uh, I'm, I'm, I'm optimizing too much. I'm optimizing way too much. Wait, I, I wanted to optimize this, right? And then in the third level, we're going to bring in the fighters. I have an idea for what the fighters going to do, like the sh spaceships. And for that, I want to have the um, two columns of threes on the outside. And then maybe how are we going to do this? Maybe like ones here in the back. No, twos in the back. 
Uh, then maybe a once in between. I don't know. It's just like some kind of nice pattern that is kind of unique, maybe. You know, twos in the back because we had ones in the front in the previous level, so we want to change things up a little bit. Oops, too much. Ones are the green ones. That seems, and then maybe like a little gap, so it's it's you know it's more um, there's more variation happening. Uh, let's actually maybe make these columns zeros as well. So there's a bit of a spacing so we can see the new enemies more clearly because there's a gap between them. Let's see how that works. Da 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 da! It feels good to just like blow everything up. It's fun. It's good. Oh, I made some mistakes. Mistake of runes here. Okay. But yeah, we have now the spaceships on the sides. It's good. Okay, there's one more thing. I just want to fix this mistake real quick. And then in a the final wave, well, that's going to be the final boss. Um, or is it? I have, do have plans on about how I'm going to do this. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm going to fill this with zeros. gonna fill the entire level with zeros and just spawn a single enemy number four that's gonna be the the big guy right uh, right here maybe we don't need to uh, actually blow everything up just let's skip straight to uh, wave number four so we start at three and it automatically advances to the next wave wave number four bam one enemy <laughs> we won the game <laughs> okay, now just to be clear, um, because it looks weird that we have like this block of text, right? Like, because previously we defined it in a line, but now we have like this block. How did that happen? Well, because this is basically like a one big line. It's just one big curly bracket definition, right? It's just like one big line. But you know, if it's, it's continuous way past the edge of the screen, and it's like that's not easy to design at all. Like designing levels like this, we're taking advantage of the fact that you can put a line break everywhere. Basically, in this programming language, it doesn't matter because it, the program, the Pico Eight, will figure things out using the then and end and everything. All those little cues will allow Pico Eight to kind of figure things out, even if there's a line break. The line breaks don't mean anything really to Pico Eight most of the time. So we can just do a line break here. And spaces, by the way, as well. Spaces are basic meaning in this as well. So we can do a line break here, right? And then, well, actually, that's too much. So we can do a line break here and a space, you know, and a line break here and a line break here and a line break here. And this allows us to create like this kind of table that is for us visually better, easier to parse. All right. So this is going to be, this was spawning the enemies. Now, the enemies are not... They are not, mm, they're not good. <laughs> they are just like, I don't like, oh, first of all, they're not attacking us in any way. We're going to deal with us later on. But also, I don't like how they just like appear, right? Uh, and that's something maybe that was a bit controversial um, because, you know, we, so far we were very much, um, we're using Galaga uh, kind of like as, as our template. We had like the music from Galaga, you know, and everything. Uh, but the unique thing, like if you go back and research some history, there's some really good videos out there, you know, how Galaga looks. Um, the un unique thing f going from Space Invaders to Galaga was that Space Invaders had like this static formation like this one. Galaga uh, felt a lot more dynamic because enemies were flying in from the sides and everything. So we had like enemies that would fly in and curve and make these beautiful swooping motions and then they would stop at their formation and then so the enemies would slowly build up a formation uh, flying in from the sides and you could like intercept them before they arrive at the formation um so it felt more dynamic overall um now i said i don't want to do that uh, i like when I, I kind of like the simplicity of the space invader design where you can just see the entire wave and you just like have to get rid of all those enemies that you see here 
Um, nevertheless, I do want the enemies to fly in. I don't like how they're just like standing there. That doesn't feel good. So let us try to make, um, for, a, for the final um, part of the episode, let's try to make them fly in. Uh, now, in order to move, make them fly in, we have to think about generally uh, the general behavior. We're going to deal with the behavior more in depth in the next episode, but we also already have to set up some uh, groundwork. And the groundwork is going to be the following. Uh, remember how we had state machines? Remember how we had like this big old state machine for the entire game? So there was this mode variable here, and depending on what the mode variable was set to, uh, the game would do completely different things, completely, uh, you know, different, uh, run completely different functions. We're going to use state machines to control the behavior of the enemies as well. The enemies will have a mission, so to speak. We're not going to give each enemy a mission. Dear enemy, now your mission is to do this. And once that mission is complete, an enemy will then switch to a different mission and do something completely else. The three missions that we're going to focus on in the beginning is flying in. Flying in from off screen to its position at where it's supposed to be. Basically what Galaga does, except we're not going to do like these complicated things. We're just going to make it fly from the top of the screen. That's fine. Fly in, the first mission. Second mission is stand there and wait. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> Try not to get shot too much. And the third mission is going to be attack. And there's going to be some kind of tiber that will change all of the enemies that are waiting to an attacking. So there you are going to have a deformation and periodically enemies will attack. That's the overall plan. Let's get going. I'm going to open up a new tab. Uh, enemy behavior. Enemy. That's behavior. Um, uh, so the, the comment that is on top of each tab, that, that one, that's the thing that um, shows up as a tooltip when you hover over the tab. Uh, some people thought it was like three minuses that you have put in there. I mean, it works with three minuses, but but two minuses works as well. Uh, it's just like it's a, that's a comment that describes the name of the tab. That's why, that's why I put a comment on top of every tab. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the behavior tab. Uh, I want to just really focus, have a specific tab for this because this is where the missions will happen. And now when we're spawning the enemies, I'm going to give them a mission. The mission fly in. Okay? I'm just going to give them a mission fly in. Now, right now, we are spawning the enemies already at their location. That's not where we want them. Um, we want them to spawn them off screen, right? So let us make it so that we're going to remember where they're supposed to go. We're going to create new properties. We're going to remember kind of where they're supposed to go. Let's call this pos x and pos y. That's kind of like their position that they're supposed to be on the screen, <laughs> like they're, the place that, that they're going to go. Uh, I'm going to set it to an X and an Y. These are the two values we get from the from the arguments. But the actual position at which we're respawning them is going to be off screen. So we're going to keep the X around for now. But Y is going to be like minus 32. Just way like at the position where it should be, but just like 32 pixels on above, which should be off screen for most of the time. Uh, let's try this, just to see if they're really off screen. Ah, uh, it's not enough, it's not enough. 48. Still not enough. Uh, 56. Still not enough? Are you kidding me? 66. Yes, the Order 66 was successful. <laughs> okay, so good. So now they have a mission. The enemies have a mission. Now we have to react to this mission somehow. Let's go to the update function. We're removing the enemies. Uh, 
I'm going to do here something like do enemy. I'm going to remove this, this enemy movement thing that we had previously we commented it out, but we're actually not going to even deal with this. Do enemy my n. And uh, so this is going to be the mission, the, the function that will take care of the mission that the enemy has. Uh, no matter what, anim what mission they have, they will still do the animation. So I'm going to actually comment this uh, enemy animation. And this is, yeah, this is still animation. Uh, enemy um, leaving screen. This is where the enemy, enemy is leaving the screen. We're going to take care of that as well later on. But for now, this is the enemy mission. Uh, and I'm going to comment this out, enemy mission. So let's uh, now do the function and do enemy. We're going to put this in behavior, uh, function do enemy my n uh, receiving my n as an argument and now we're going to just do like the same thing as here where we're checking the mode that the game was set into we're checking which mission this enemy has so we're going to go if uh, my n dot mission equals double equals fly in we're flying in flying in Otherwise, my end dot mission equals hover. Let's just call it hover. Just hover. Then staying pot. And then else if my mission equals attack. I, I kind of feel I, I feel inclined to call this not hover by protect. Let's call this protect. We protect and we attack. That makes sense to me. Attack. Okay. Fly in, protect, attack. <laughs> because I feel like the enemies are protecting, like the, the like the the in your way. Maybe there's like a mothership, and that's the going to be the final boss. I don't know. All right. For now, I'm not really that interested in protect and attack. <laughs> I'm more interested in flying in, right? So um, how are we going to the fly in? Well, basically we spawn enemies above where they're supposed to be. So what we can, you know, something that we can do here is just like, we're gonna move them downwards. We're gonna go my and Now I'm just writing it directly here in this do enemy function. Later on, especially when we talk about the attack functions, because there's the attack functions are gonna be different from enemy to enemy. We might actually create a specific function to do the different missions but for now and we can just write the mission directly in here especially if the missions are not going to be that complicated for the fly in we're going to go my n dot y plus equals one we're just going to increase the y value and we're going to go if my n dot y if that is greater or equal my n dot uh what do we call this pause y right pause y is the position that we want to be at that, that's the position that the enemy should be, should find themselves in at. Then, so if it the y position is equal to our target position where it's supposed to be, or greater, if maybe we overshot somehow, then I just want to stop, uh, and I'm going to change the mission to protect. We're going to say my n dot mission equals. Uh, Run this. Bah. It pays it for bread. Is it though? There's two things I don't like about this. Think number one is... I don't like how they're all moving in unison. It all like they're uh, just moving on together. It would be nice if it was a bit more organic, like maybe there's they're flying in and because in Galaga, you know, again Galaga was kind of like something that we we're kind of also uh, uh, curious about, right? Uh, the enemies are flying one by one a little bit and then slowly building up the formation. Uh, we're not maybe going quite as far, but it would be nice if it, there was some kind of like more 
So if the enemies were moving a little bit independently of each other. Another thing I also want to add is I don't like how it looks a bit robotic. It's I just like, you know, like, uh, like brought in through with a forklift. You could make a forklift sound like uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> something like this. It feels, it doesn't feel as dynamic. So I feel like this is something that we're going to have to deal with on the next episode because this episode is already running very, very, very late. Now let's move on to the doggy zone. Right, the doggy zone. So there's two tasks I have for you in a doggy zone. First task is, well, maybe three tasks. First task is you, we have levels here. I designed some levels here. I want you to design some levels here, some interesting designs. Um, we have four waves, but maybe, you know, let's just expand it to, I don't know, eight waves or something or six waves, just design a bunch of levels and th think of interesting layouts. It would be interesting to come out with interesting layouts and post them in Discord as well. That would be kind of like an kind of easy uh, doggy zone, just like generally doing some ga uh, game design stuff. The second task, and that's kind of like a very obvious thing, well, <clears throat> as I said, I feel like it's a bit too, um, too wooden the way they're coming in, like robotic the way they're coming in, and they're all coming in unison. So can you make the fly-in animation seem more lively, more interesting, more varied? Can you find a way of making this, this, this fly-in mission work in a more dynamic way so we kind of like get more, um, so it's not, not as boring as it is right now? But the third doggy zone thing here, um, the attack mission, we have an attack mission where the enemies are attacking. The protect mission is not going to be too complicated, but the attack mission is going to be complicated. So uh, again, can you find out a way of how to make the enemies attack? The green enemies will just, let's say, just move downwards. Can you figure this out? Um, make occasionally some enemies will, will break out of formation and attack downwards. Can you make it work? Because we will certainly will on the upcoming episodes. For now, I want to give a big shout out to the people at Coffee who made this show possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a one-time donation over at Coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll gain access to new episodes of the series earlier, so there's no need to wait. And there's also all sorts of other behind-the-scenes features. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, man, ooh, yeah, we are moving at a crazy pace. We have beautiful enemies, a beautiful wall of enemies now. This is starting to look more and more like a game. But on the next episode, we're gonna tackle the, the, the quest, the problem of enemy behavior. See you on the next episode, guys. Bye-bye.